I'm honestly surprised how many people don't know about The Sims Olympus and this was the game we were fated to receive as the next Sims title rather than the 2014 release of The Sims 4. The launch of The Sims 4 was tragic and the current state of the game is not looking too great either, but looking back, Project Olympus makes The Sims 4 look like Game of the Year and would have taken any passion away from the most die-hard Sims 4 loyalists. So just to give you some context, this weird online Sims reboot goes all the way back to 2008, which was just one year before The Sims 3 release. That's so mind-boggling to me. That means EA had this strange obsession with online multiplayer since back in the day, and it looks like that's where they want to take Project Renee, which is concerning in of itself, but whatever. Apparently, the original idea for The Sims Olympus was scrapped due to negative feedback from focus testing and it didn't have a lot of monetary promise. Makes sense, this is still EA, but I think what really sent this unreleased game to its early grave was the fiasco that was the SimCity 2013 launch, aka SimCity 5. I don't know what, but I swear EA is attracted to rough game drops. I remember this time too. To play SimCity 5, you had to play with a constant internet connection. The servers didn't even work most of the time, and when they were down for maintenance, you couldn't play at all. Okay fine, I was optimistic back then, so I moved on quickly once I got into the game. But no, it just continued to get worse. After 20-ish hours, you were kind of stuck in this gameplay loop because the maps were too small and on top of all of that there was originally zero mod support at first. If you tried EA would ban you so you can see where they stood with that. It got to the point that after update 10 they just completely abandoned the game and closed down Max's studios. With the last bit of common sense they had they understood that releasing an online version of The Sims with the exact same issues would most definitely leave them with two dead franchises instead of one. So they scrapped everything to do with Project Olympus at the last minute, took assets from that game and put them into the Sims 4 base game and later released DLC, and that's how we're stuck with the game we all know and love today. The backstory of Project Olympus is just unfortunate but honestly kind of hilarious. This may be cold tea but the afternoon I spent researching this made me realize I barely knew the full story. If you want a more detailed background you can find the videos and articles I posted in the description. There is plenty enough to get your fill. Which is why I didn't want to focus on the what of The Sims Olympus but rather what could have been. What would Project Olympus look like if it made it to the hands of the player? I mean technically we already know and obviously so does EA but I don't want to think about the reality, I want to know what a successful online multiplayer sims title looks like. So as I do, I overthought about a ridiculous hypothetical and I can actually see this working. Before I get too deep, we need to accept some rules as reality if this hypothetical is supposed to make any type of sense. First thing in this alternative timeline, the SimCity 5 debacle never happened. This is what ultimately killed EA's confidence, so if we presume SimCity 5 had a smooth launch, being a huge hit with players resulting in the franchise living on, we would have the next online Sims title on our hands. Rule 2. The leaks for Project Olympus doesn't exist or at the very least were kept to a minimum. Thanks to Patrick Kelly, we knew quite a bit of what was going on behind the scenes and we know EA was not a fan of this as he is no longer working for them. Remove the leaks, therefore remove all community community discourse and speculation on the downfall of EA and The Sims. The last and final rule, which is probably the most critical to make this hypothetical reality as authentic as possible, we have to believe EA is a publisher that has a passion for the player and not the dollar. Their games are made with players in mind so that they feel satisfied with purchasing a robust and detailed gaming experience. In short, EA has their priority straight. Take those three rules and accept them as fact and we can now paint a picture of The Sims Olympus online. At first pitch, an online sims game turns me off automatically. I don't like it, I never wanted it, would rather they kept it. Sounds like the start of a dystopia in all honesty. So how would you get someone like me on board with this idea? You would have to dissect the aspect that is so unappealing when combining the sims with an online experience. The last thing I would want is the core features that makes the sims, the sims, sacrificed for online play. To avoid that, let's switch it up. It's very possible to combine great single player gameplay with an online world. Take Animal Crossing for example, if you asked some, it's best played alone. If you asked others, it's better to share your island with friends. Bottom line, the option is the ultimate way to blend the original player base with the new fans looking for a shared experience. The option to still enjoy an in-depth and single player mode while having an added bonus to show off my progress erases my immediate hesitation. At this point, I'm at least willing to give the game a try. 
Can we now talk about the art style of Project Olympus? Looking back, the early concept images look like a 2008 reject, which technically it was, but we're not trying to turn off simmers at first glance. We can take the easy route and just assume Project Olympus would have the same art style we are familiar with in The Sims 4. Basically, just take this, add polish, and now it's giving this. Whatever your stance on the art style when The Sims 4 dropped, I feel like this might be the best decision to please most players. Simmers either tolerate it or love it. It's an easy style to digest and by the state of the game now, it does hold up over time. I have noticed when looking at the concept images of The Sims Olympus, it's hard not to confuse them with early looks at The Sims 4. Safe to say they were headed in that direction anyway. Now to the part that gets me most excited to just think about, let's talk about the expansion pack rollout. Yes, only expansion packs. There shouldn't be any game stuff or God forbid, kit packs. Having DLC is not the problem. I would put down an entire 1K for dozens of expansions if they were all packed full of content and did what they were supposed to do, expand the game. And I bet you the Sims community would not have a problem with this either. However, I won't get carried away and tolerate any sort of rehashing of features we received with previous games. This needs to be a live service game. If there were features that didn't make it into the release, drop it in a free update. When did Minecraft come out like 2011? Correct me if I'm wrong, but there has not been a single bit of paid DLC for the main game. Horses, free update. Cars, free update. Clubs, date night, restaurants, weather, not a single bit of unoriginal content better have a price. Plus, this is the easiest way to promote your game. Advertise these updates as if they were paid DLC and that's how you bring in a constant stream of new players. Expansions we do have will be original ideas never seen in a sims game. I'm not that creative so I'll save the never before seen ideas to you. I did think about how this will work if one player buys the pack but others don't. I personally would prefer if all players could see the clothing and objects from the expansions but could only interact with the new features if you have paid for the pack. It will avoid the game looking messy down the line and for the sake of business that's in-game advertising right there. I love how I stated in this alternative reality it is not money hungry but I'm trying to give them out so they can put their grummy business practices to good use but anyways i think some sort of version of the sims 3 store would be cool yes i know i thought you said no cash grabs true but the quality of the sims 3 store was close to top tier content and in any case it's optional it might even be more tolerable if all the assets were cosmetic and the gameplay was saved for the game either way expansions and a store are as far as i'll go for paid content nothing more nothing less in this online sims title that doesn't exist but I wish did at this point, mod support will obviously be supported day one. I really need to understand the mindset of the people that make decisions at EA. Why would you even attempt this? Giving your community freedom to be creative adds numerous benefits that keep old games alive and thriving. Not hard to believe, if The Sims 4 didn't have mod support at all, mass exodus from the community would have happened sooner and 10 times faster. Modding is simultaneously the glue and the foundation and is necessary in the genre of life simulation. Still making that happen in an online game is a little tricky. I don't have to say I have no experience in the game development. So the simplest idea I can think of is custom assets would work the same as DLC. Everyone can see but only the ones who have it downloaded can interact with the objects. And that right there is where the vision stops. Delusions aside, The Sims Olympus would have been a bust and EA knows that. The contrast between the way they rushed Sims 4 content to then when they scrapped an entire game that was in development for years. If EA truly had the audacity to launch the online title, we could have been sure to expect the same issues that were present with SimCity, no single player mode, core game features sacrificed for online play and restricted budget, tons of microtransactions, the same kind of vibe Dreamlight Valley is giving off right now with the in-game currency mainly accumulated with real money, all this cherried with a weird community to support this game right into the ground because this would have no doubt been the eventual Sims franchise killer. You know what's crazy? I'm starting to recognize names in the comments and that is a feeling they don't tell you about. Seriously, thank you guys for supporting me and the long breaks between videos. I swear I'll pick up the speed soon. We're so close to 1k which is insane. Again, I ask this every time, why? <laughs> Anyway, thank you for sticking through me doing whatever this is on this channel. I don't know, I'm just going with the flow and I kind of like it. <laughs> thank you for watching and I'll see you guys soon.